This is the recently relaunched Cervelo Soloist. The Soloist, of course, was probably one of the first dedicated aero bikes the world ever seen way back in the mid 2000s. And fast forward to today, it's still got plenty of aero cues. It's got internal cable routing, it's got aero profile tubes, it's got uh, yeah, 40 mil rims, aero shaped handlebars. But I think it is safe to say, compared to Cervelo's top of the range S5, it's not the out and out aero bike that, uh, that certainly that S5 is. So we thought, along with the help of the new aero measuring device from Aero Sensor, we would see just how fast we could make this new Soloist. So Barnaby, we've spent uh, the better part of two days just optimizing this Cervelo Soloist and not necessarily to find out what's the fastest setup for me, but more just to give us an idea here at Cycling Tips, how the aero sensor works and just, you know, proving the concept, I guess, of, of aero testing on the road. Uh, yeah. For myself and only, who's had so many difficulties in the past. But yeah, we're just done. That's why I'm sitting on kit. Tell me now, what kind of results did we see? You know, we obviously tested the bike in its stock position as a baseline. Yeah. Tested it again later and then made a series of adaptions. Did I get any faster? Yeah, I, th I think we did a pretty good job. So we started off with the bike, as you're saying, as, as it rolls out the box, um, with the drag coefficient of about 0.34. A large proportion of which I make up. Yeah, ex ex sitting on the bike. Ex ex exactly. You you'll typically be about 80% of that, that drag number, mm -hmm. um, which is why your, your body position is so important. So, so to that end, the first thing we did was looking at some um, more aer aerodynamic profile bars, mm -hmm. and you extend them forwards and drop them a bit with a different stem. Mm -hmm. and that, that, we actually found that to be about five watts uh, worse, five watts slower. Yes. Um, give, given the wind, we were seeing repeatability of around like one, one and a half percent, and, mm -hmm. and that represents it's slower by about 1.6 percent. So it's right on the margins of what we have confidence in. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's, 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 it wasn't substantial improvement. It was definitely a little bit worse. And I guess the, you know, you mentioned the caveat there that it, it was within the sort of range that we couldn't really be certain about the results. But the key thing for me was that I expected moving to more aero profile handlebars, albeit the same width of handlebars, yeah. and putting them further in front of me and lower down yeah. would naturally get me into a more aerodynamic position, but potentially I was actually sitting wider or something like that. That's, you know, it, it's, it, we can't draw the conclusion that it was the handlebars or the stem. Or, no, or of, 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 of course, no, your, your, your whole body position has changed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and this, this is why you need to be a bit careful with the conclusions we, we draw. Um, if we had a lot of time, we could start picking it apart with, you know, mm -hmm. going back on the old handlebars, e even looking at your, kind of your, your, your stem height, you know, if we could change that whole height to kind of dig into it. But, um, but, you know, we, we wanted to, to take it step by step. So then we moved to the kids' handlebars. So then you moved to kids' yeah. handlebars, which yes. was hilarious, but actually pretty good. That, that, that saved, um, that effect in itself was a 10 watt gain. So you're now six watts faster than your starting point. Okay. Um, so yeah, r really um, decent change. That's well outside our repeatability. We can be like absolutely certain that is faster um if, if you don't mind being <laughs> <No>. humiliated <laughs> well I, I guess the the big thing here is that i've had those kids handlebars they're 30 32 centimeters wide they're very yeah. very narrow i've had them for about a year and a half yeah. never put them on a bike for very a variety of different reasons but when i put them on today I, I think they were like i think they were about you know don't quote me 30 pound or something they were very very cheap compared yeah. to you know any other handlebar we could have tested today um but they're also, you know, narrow bars have got this reputation for being difficult to control in that. And I certainly riding today had no issues. Yeah. The, 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 the second I got on the bike, I was comfortable and confident in controlling the bike. It didn't yeah. feel any, um, any more wobbly than I usually do on the bike. So yeah. that yeah. was a good thing combined with the fact that it is just faster, I think is, you know, that that's actually kind of a, a headline takeaway from the testing we did, just how much difference going narrower, or going that narrow even, because yeah. everybody knows going narrow makes a difference, but going that narrow made a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. In fact, that's probably a similar size effect, even a bigger effect than some aero wheels that you'd be spending two, three or four thousand pounds on. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty good buy, as mm -hmm. I'm saying. You mentioned the wheels there. We also took a host of different wheel sets Try them in the same Cervelo Soloist, albeit it was in yesterday's very, very blustery conditions. Yeah. We tested the Zup 
858 NSWs, we tested the reserve 40 odd millimeters that come stock in the mm -hmm. Solus, we tested the reserve 6050s, the new set that came in the S5, we tested the parkour wheels, but really given yesterday's conditions, there was almost nothing in it? Yeah, almost nothing. I, I know all, all of the, the deep section of the reserve 60s, the, um, the parkour and the zips were like definitely better than your reserve 40s, but by a pretty small margin, only just outside our, our repeatability mm -hmm. on that day, which is maybe two or three percent. So, and I know you can't be confident in the numbers, yeah. But the big takeaway for me was that the parkour wheels, which were are, you know, not far off a quarter of the price of some of the other wheel sets, yep. Actually, technically speaking, you were saying they were the they were the fastest. Yeah, so I think we're both hesitant to say they were the fastest because it was such blustery conditions. Exactly. But there was certainly, given real world conditions, yeah, very little of it. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you could argue that given that how windy it was yesterday, that's a great day to test um, the deep section wheels because you know actually the we're seeing a wide range of your angles. Are they you know are you able to ride them? Are they better? How how do they compare to each other? And actually, they were. Given our repeats with it yesterday, a bit of a wash, but the, but the parkour certainly seems like a good bet. And that's something you know I'm doing an in-depth <laughs> review on each of those wheel sets. Something that I will come back to in those. We yep. yesterday's location didn't really give us a chance. You know, there there, there was no passing vehicles. Mm -hmm. there, there there was no gates where you could get across the side one that would catch a wheel set. So you know there there could be differences between the wheels beyond the aerodynamics that yeah. I'll come back to in another time. Sure. So then fast forward today again, we took those parkour wheels. Yep. We put the same tires on them as the baseline test today and what did we find then when we ran the test? So, so that was another about two watt um, improvement, okay. so pretty small, sort of similar to what we saw um, yesterday actually okay. um, in, in terms of results. So that, that's actually quite nice, we tested them in blustery, more blustery conditions yesterday we sort of proved that that was a valid result. Hmm. Um, so yeah, now you're up to about kind of 12 watt um, somewhere between 12 and 15 watt advantage overall oh, okay so which is pretty substantial. I mean, if i could train myself 12 to 15 watts faster i would be quite yeah. quite delighted <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 absolutely but as i mentioned earlier you can make all the adaptions to the bike but the lump of meat sitting on top is still yeah. the biggest drag factor in, in this whole equation yeah what happened then when i actually kept all these aero changes and then got myself into the most aerodynamic position that i could hold Yes, yeah, so, so that, that was an enormous effect. That was about um, 50, 55 watts of, okay. of, of saving of that position. So that's, that's and it puts it into context, you know, we're, we're sort of um, quibbling about five watts here or there for your wheels, but actually getting, getting yourself down into an aero position is, knocks everything else out mm -hmm. of the park. And 50 watts is a massive saving. But again, again uh, the way I think about that is I would rather have the 50 watts from my new position plus the 15 from all the adaptions we made. Of course, yeah, yeah, ab ab absolutely. And of course, you, you're not going to be able to hold that yeah. position all the time. And actually, That's what I wanted to ask. Can you see how the repeatability looked for that, those two runs? Because I was having a lot of difficulty holding that position. It was kind of the position I'm thinking I would hold yeah. if I needed to bridge to a breakaway or something like that. It, it's, it was certainly not an all-day position. Yeah, no, for sure. But it, it was, you did two out and backs, and the mm. difference between those out and backs was 0.8%. So okay actually like really solid um so yeah you can say with absolute confidence that um that's a lot better i think this sort of brings into another um feature of what the the, the sense can do in that it can tell you how much of your power is pushing you through the air so we, we, got, we got that dial that I, I showed you which shows you all the time how much power is going into aero so you can make a decision all the way like actually you know if you're seeing 90 95 percent of your power is going through aero like mm -hmm. get yourself down the power doesn't matter so, so much anymore especially if you're going downhill mm -hmm. um whereas if it's only kind of 60 70 percent it matters less so save yourself mm -hmm. and get yourself i've definitely had times where i'm like maybe on a slight incline and not really knowing am i better to maintain an aero position or am i better to get out of the saddle and produce more power and I guess that's what that answer is for. Yeah, because that's, that's a very difficult calculation to do in your head because there's, there's a lot going on with the wind um, and, the, and the slope of the, of the road. I don't think anybody can make an accurate call on that. Whereas, you know, after a bit of training, you can say, look, you know what, whenever it's above 85%, I'm going to get myself into an aero position. Mm -hmm. You can just have a, and one thing we, somebody suggested the other day, actually, you could just have a, a sort of green red or set something up. So it's like, you need to get, fully aero now or now it doesn't doesn't matter so you can really save yourself when it doesn't matter and mm -hmm. um put the effort in when it does 
So my finishing CDA in the arrow, well give me the two actually, in the standard road position and the arrow road position, my two CDAs were. So it's 0.315 in the um, standard arrow position and 0.254 in okay. your arrow position. So that 0.31 was about what, 0 0.03 lower than the baseline position was it? Yeah, point, point point zero, but about point zero um, two five. Yeah. So I think then what we've established is that by adding more arrow tweaks to your bike and getting narrower and lower, you're going to go faster. Which yeah. is shocker. <laughs> well, I think what we set out to do was, you know, add just give myself confidence in using the arrow sensor yeah. that I'm getting accurate results, and by proving what we presumed would be the case. I assume we've sort of gone some way to doing that. But what was more interesting to me was just the fact that the best CDA I got to in a standard row position with all these arrow tweaks, with everything dialed with the arrow helmet, skin suit, the whole works was 0.3 something. And supposedly Dan Bigham's arrow record CDA was 0.15, like half of my CDA. <laughs> <laughs> so I think on that note, we might just wrap it up there yeah. and I might go away and cry in a corner somewhere. <laughs>